Hi, Nathan with Complete Water Solutions, and today we're going to be taking a resin sample out of this softener tank right here. We're going to cover some of the reasons why you might want to take a resin sample, so stay tuned. <laughs> Before we begin on pulling a sample out of the softener tank, we're going to cover a few things that you might need. First and foremost, always remember your PPE. If your facility requires you to lock out, tag out your softener system or wear safety glasses or whatever your PPE may be required, please make sure you adhere by your guidelines. So let's talk about a few items that you may need. One, you're going to need a sample container for your resin and you're going to probably fill up a a, a quart or maybe so of resin down here at the bottom and we'll cover that here in a minute you don't have to fill the full jar uh, we're also gonna you might need a piece of pipe the pipe should be about half the length or so of your bed depth of your tank because you're gonna want to pull a core sample not just scoop it off the top um, if you have a really really big softener tank my recommendation is to put a ball valve at the top of this uh, piece of pipe uh, this way you can turn around get it in your bed and actually valve it off and then pull it out so here today I'm just going to use my thumb cover it and then I'm going to pull it out and I will then extract the resin into the jar like so so uh, you may need that as well as maybe a screwdriver a pair of channel locks to disassemble some pieces apart now on this particular softener system it has a top or center distributor system so as you can see here this is what we pulled off apart on top of the softener tank here and inside here we have a center distributor and the center distributor may come up with your uh, when you're pulling your adapter your tank or your valve off just be cognizant of that because if it does pull up too far you may have issues trying to get it back into the bed. So uh, you may have to actually try to get it up a little bit, get a pair of channel locks on it, and then pull the top off the rest of the way. Um, some older models may even have a set screw inside of your distributor tube here. So without further ado, let's go over what's next. All right, so now let's cover taking a sample, a core sample from your softener system. So now one of the things you don't want to do is just take a sample from the top of your bed or towards the top of the tank. Reason being is because you're going to get some fines or some resin that may not be um, the best resin or the resin that's doing all the work. So the resin that's doing the majority of the work in a standard softener system is going to probably be, uh, you know, the, the latter three quarter of your tank here. So we're going to go ahead and grab our piece of pipe here as you'll see some water is going to spill out not a big deal just going to stick our thumb right over it and like so just got to be careful some water is going to come out and then I'm going to go ahead and release my thumb and I'll get some resin inside of my jar here do that one more time now there are other ways and other extraction methods that you could use uh, to pull your sample and you'll see you'll get some outside the tank here it's going to happen this particular resin happens to be anion resin uh, used for nitrate removal process but we'll go ahead and we will wipe that off there and again you want to fill your jar up right uh, you want to get a good good core sample to send into the lab uh, and they'll sample that and get that taken care of for you and it's good you sample it ever so often and then you can turn around and get your analysis back to determine how your resin is if you're to pull just a sample off the top of your softener bed it may not be vindicative of how the whole bed is right because you might get dirt or some other debris that's towards the top of your tank crack beads swollen beads stuff like that so getting a core sample is ideal when you want to send it in for a lab analysis now, some of our customers send in a lab analysis once every couple of years. Uh, some want to do it more frequently, others maybe less frequently. But it's a good idea just to do it ever so often. Maybe every couple of years, grab yourself a lab analysis for your softener resin. The next thing you can also do while you have your tank apart is you can measure what's called the freeboard. And this is where you'll take a tape measure and you'll measure from the top of the tank to roughly about where your bed depth begins. And so you can kind of feel that as you're going about this free board can kind of tell you if you've lost some resin because when you start up your softener system you should measure the free board at that time and then you can determine from the day to start up to the day that you pulled your sample if you've lost any resin and approximately how much and at this time you could potentially top it off or you could wait till your analysis comes back to then top it off so let's cover some reasons why you might want to get a resin analysis next 
Now, let's cover some of the reasons why you might want to run a resin analysis. A couple reasons or key takeaways from this is that you may just want to see how your resin is doing, right, from a maintenance standpoint. Other reasons might be because of fouling. Things like iron and other stuff that might be in the water that can cause fouling on the beads. And when you have iron fouling on resin beads, you can take away capacity or lose the ability to soften. So those are some reasons. Another reason might be is that you might have oxidation or you might have a large pressure differential across your softener bed. This can be caused by chlorine or other oxidizers that might be in your water stream that could break down the resin beads over time causing them to be more of a micro bead or potentially even gel out. They lose their cross link and at this can cause a, pressure, a large pressure differential across the resin bed. Another reason might be capacity. You might start out with 10,000 gallons in between regenerations and now maybe you're down to 7,000 gallons. Maybe keep lowering it. You know, this type of loss in, uh, in capacity is most likely an occurrence of not necessarily mechanical, but just the beads breaking down, especially if it's been a long time or they could potentially just need to be clean. Could be a couple different factors, but a resin analysis will help determine that and determine whether or not if you should replace them or if you can just clean it to get your bed back to normal. Another reason might be is looking at chloride reduction or salt reduction in your softener system. And again, when we lower the capacity, you're gonna end up having to regenerate more frequently and potentially use more salt as well as more mechanical wear and tear on your softener system. Well, replacing the resin or definitively identifying whether you need to replace it will help you in determining if I replace it, can I get my capacity back and can I reduce my mechanical wear? Can I reduce my salt consumption and my water waste as well as my, as my chloride reduction? These things can be reasons why you might want to test your resin or have your resin tested. Hey, I just want to say thanks for watching our video today. If you found it helpful at all, would you do me a favor? Hit the subscribe button or the like button. It really would help us out. And as always, if you need help with your water system or you want us to test your resin for you or have a technician come out and do a once over, we would be more than happy to help you out. Our contact information is in the description below or if you even need new resin. We also carry a lot of resin here in stock and get you squared away. And as always, have yourself a wonderful day, guys. We'll talk to you soon.